Hello guys, welcome back to my channel Kajirata Online. In this video, we are going to discuss and also look into the opportunity of using IoT devices in controlling uh, certain relays for our high voltages appliances. And then after that, we can control it far away from our house by using an internet connection. So in this particular idea, I'm going to use what we call it as the ESP32 module together with the graphical programming language named as a PictoBlocks. A full credit goes to the PictoBlocks and the idea of this particular exercise can be found in the descriptions of this video. So let's begin into the connection and let us do it now. So first of all, we need the ESP32. As you know, the ESP32 have a, a very comprehensive module which can communicate with our Wi-Fi module and also the Bluetooth module. In this particular example, I'm going to focus more on the Wi-Fi module. So the connection is very simple. I have here a simple relay. This is a 5 volt relay where they are going to control a corresponding high voltage power over here that you might want to uh, connect it with your electrical appliances. And then you have two jumper wire over here that are actually communicate with our microcontroller ESP32 where I, I'm going to use only a two um, different wire over here. So the first wire will be the signal wire identify as this red color S and then I got the another one the negative sign is actually the ground so the simple the simplest connection will be you connect the white color over here or the uh, minus sign into your ESP32 ground and that another one you are going to connect it with any digital output or digital input um, corresponding pin in this case I'm going to use the digital pin number four so when I'm going to code it, I'm just going to use the digital pin number 4 as the mechanism of control for this ESP32 to control my relays. And uh, the use of this particular relay is basically, for example, I'm away from my house and then I want to open up my um, garage lamp and also um, preheated something on my uh, inside my house so I can do it uh, far away from the... Uh, house okay so this is the iot project so in this uh, particular example i'm going to use the pre-made um, setup using the picto blocks so the reason of doing this or using the picto blocks is to give you an idea about how you can code it uh, in much more simplified uh, process so if you are newbies or if you are very new uh, in terms of using the ESP32 and also understanding about the electronics so uh, this one will not be something that you will be afraid for so the first one you have to give some credential to your ESP32 module where you have to use this connection or we call it as the IOT so to request to this IOT function you have to have the account inside the PictoBlocks or Steampedia website you can just go over here at an extension and then you can find out the appropriate extension name as IOT. So you can request those IOT function and of course uh, the IOT functions only can be used um, by signing in into your account. So I already have the account from the Steampedia. It's a very free account. It's a um, very simple one and then you can have a look into their uh, module and then have an idea about what they sell also in terms of the electronics package. I think it's very worth and then uh, their platform also very useful uh, for you and your kids to learn about electronics. Alright, so the next step is actually we initialize the connections of our Wi-Fi. So please do insert your Wi-Fi name and also your Wi-Fi password. And then you are going to use this block. We are going to use the Adafruit I.O. So if you are not familiarized, what is the Adafruit I.O.? So Adafruit I.O. is actually the cloud platform that I enable you to create a um, specific uh, landing page or we call it as a cloud services uh, for your IoT project that are being connected with your microcontroller unit. In this case, I'm going to use uh, my uh, simpler account which is the free account by the uh, Adafruit. You can just navigate over here io.adafruit.com and then you can register a simple account free of charge. Of course, the free account got some limitation but uh, anyway, we can still use it for uh, these educational purposes. Alright, so let us go into the next one. We are going to connect uh, to our IO uh, Adafruit using our username and also the uh, IO key. So, 
IO key means that the IO and the fruit key over here, it is available. My key, you can click over here, my key. You can see this is your username and then this is your active key. So if your key is being jeopardized, you can generate your own uh, new key by just click those uh, regenerate my key. And then after that, you are going to insert this forever blue. Okay, you can insert this uh, forever loop and then inside this forever loop actually they have a few command here that are uh, can easily been shown You can insert the first one. We call it as set LED So this set LED is basically you have to create a variable in this case I already create a variables name as LED it's just a simple variable where I can uh, set it as LED. So the LED are going to be indicated as my switching or my itemized item to be referred with with my um, IO Adafruit. Okay. And then I'm going to give the name of the feed. So in this case, I'm going to use it as a switch and then I'm going to set it as a string. Okay. So to connect it to your IO Adafruit, of course, you have to navigate to your feed. So where is the feed after you assign into your io.adafruit.com and then you have a profile, feed and dashboard. So in this case, I'm going to begin with the feed and then followed by the view all. After you have the opportunity to view all of your feeds, then you can create these new feed functions. So the new feed is basically the idea is where you want to create a a word that are being connected with your microcontroller unit uh, so that you can control it um, via distance okay so i'm going to name it a switch and then just hit the create button so the switch variable here under the feeds is already been created inside my io adafruit so the next step is actually go to your dashboard so in this particular example i'm going to use the new dashboard go to the dashboard and then view all under the view all of your dashboard you can create a new dashboard in this case i'm going to call it as a switch dashboard and then uh, switch on my uh, garage lamp okay this is example only so i'm going to spell it out like this and then i can go and click those hyperlink being created under the io adafruit over there uh, to create my um, what we call it as the switch function so i'm going to use something like that okay and then um, after that I already have the idea of this particular dashboard it is empty dashboard right so that is okay because um, I can uh, further proceed with this gear button over here okay just go to this uh, button and then go to the create new block okay this create new block enable you to create something that are available in the IO Adafruit. They have a lots of ideas whether you want to stream your data, whether you want to make some sort of a gauge, whether you want to take pictures and so on. But in this case, I'm going to use a toggle button over here, just a simple toggle button just to switch on and off. So I'm going to click my default feed, which is in this case is a switch, right? Because just now I already named it as a switch. Uh, as one of my mechanisms to interact with my microcontroller and then I'm going to hit the next step so I'm going to call upon switch okay switch or in Malay we call it as Swiss okay S-U-I-Z Swiss and then the button on the on the text will be on and off and then this is as default I'm not going to um, arrange it or manipulate it I'm just going to um, have it like a default setting and then i'm going to hit the create block and then the switch are already in place and then they have this switch okay if you can see over here properly if you go and click it switch on and off what you can see is basically um, it is make some change right uh, with regard to the time over here of course because they will record those time so those uh, recorded time is actually available inside your feed so that you know when exactly you push on and off or when exactly those things are being triggered by someone or somebody or some um, sensors are, uh, are going to be detected by your setup okay so let me just proceed with the dashboard first okay so this is my dashboard and then i'm going to navigate back into my picto blocks and then i'm going to uh, use this button we call it as a get last data from switch as string so we are going to play with the string variable because we are going to compare those strings string means that the alphabetical order or the alphabet number uh, not a numeric is a basically a, a character 
uh, of our data. So I'm going to use the if statement. So I have two if statement here. So if LED is equal to on, then I'm going to set my digital pin number four. So remember, I already set up my digital pin just now, number four as high. And then if the LED is equal to off, um, so I'm going to put my digital pin number four uh, to be low. So this is a very uh, important mechanism where you can control after this this switch and then the relay are going to correspond the action accordingly. So let me upload the code first and then see what is the action on our relay. Okay. So now we have our uh, code ready to be uploaded. I'm just going to put my internet credential over here and of course uh, for security purposes, I'm not going to expose it. Okay, so we go to the upload setting over here. And then if you're not sure how to upload the code in using the Pictoblox, please do refer our list of um, tutorial that are going to explain about the Pictoblox and their way of coding it using a graphical programming approach. After building up the compilations of the code or sketches, we call it, and then uh, it will be stored inside our microcontroller uh, together with the credentials of our internet connectivity and also our I.O. Adafruit. And we are going to see some sort of action uh, with our Adafruit I.O. together with the action um, on our ESP module that already attached with the relay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, so this is the final output of our project. So after we connect it with the Wi-Fi, uh, the ESP module are going to be light on over here. Uh, previously, you can just see only a uh, red light, but now you can see the blue light means that the connectivity is there. And then uh, we can uh, put the switch on the different mode. For example, if I press the on, and then uh, a few seconds later, you can see over here, we have the LED are going to uh, bright on activated our relay. So our relay here can connect with our high voltage appliances. So you can also go and then click the switch off where the switch off mechanism is basically uh, turning off the functions of the relay. So you can do it again by switching it on and then you can uh, do it again by switching it off. So they have a little bit of delay approximate uh, 0 0.5 to um, 0 0.8 second due to the fact of this uh, live recording versions might uh, encounter some um, bandwidth capacity usage. All right. So that is overall the idea of using the Picto blocks, especially as uh, Steampedia related product and then uh, ESP module where you can code it also using the Picto blocks, uh, graphical programming language and then uh, utilizing the IO Adafruit, a free account versions of course. And then you can have your relay can be connected uh, via wireless and then can be monitor and also function very well uh, using our mobile device, using our laptop and so on, provided that we have uh, the ability to access to our account. So just uh, to give you some idea, you can also um, adjust those dashboard privacy if you want to make it as public. Uh, but make sure that you are going to share the link or have the ability to use the link. Otherwise, you, you're not knowing what you are actually uh, looking at. Okay. So let's say I'm going to switch on and switch it off from my mobile phone. I can see it is being uh, impacted over here based on our action by uh, just doing switching on and off. Okay. So that is the very basic idea. And then you can see the fits over here. So the fits are going to record all of our ideas. Um, in terms of switching on on and then switching it off uh, based on the specific values uh, in terms of the uh, second okay even though it is a very um, detailed tabulations of data that you can uh, download it later on to make some evaluation or to make some sort of record for yourself uh, via your IoT performance. Alright, so that is a very beautiful and um, simplified versions of my explanation. Uh, together with the coding part using the Arduino um, PictoBlox compatible software and then uh, you can have the ESP work together with your relay. Alright, so that's all for today. Thank you for watching this video. Please consider helping me with this three click. The first one, please do click the like button so that a lot of people can 
uh, get benefit from watching this video and then the second one please do share it to your friend and family and then the third the most important thing is please do also consider subscribing my channel so that you will get the future details but make sure you click also the subscribe and the notification bell so that you will not miss any of our future updates in the future so until then see you again next time thank you for watching this video and see you again next time bye bye